We're in C. Pleasant at the New Hope Gym training facility for Maury's Freight Train Bynum. How's it going today? Good, good. Can't complain. Can't complain. Workout's coming good. You're getting ready for a, July, uh, a big fight in July, July 7th. It's a United States WBC title. How's that coming along for you? You ready for that fight? Yeah, I'm ready for the fight. Uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be even more ready uh, <laughs> a month from now when an actual fight occur. But I'm, uh, everything's coming along just well, man. You know, uh, boxing's been coming along good. Uh, conditioning and everything's been coming along good. Can't complain. Well, I noticed when I got to the gym, you had a lot of pictures of the, the guy you're fighting around. What, 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 what's that all about? Well, I like to put his picture over top of all my pictures. That make me feel like he's trying to take my spot, so, you know, I got to knock him down. The only thing, you know, it's just motivation for me. I got a picture by my bed that I, that I wake up to every morning, you know, <laughs> and I look at him before I even look at my wife. So, you're 13, 1 and 1, you got 9 KOs. Um, your last fight, January 21st, mm -hmm. against a, a new, another up-and-coming fight up from Philly, um, Bryant Jennings. How, how, you know, what happened with that fight? Um, uh, obviously his game plan uh, worked a lot more, uh, a lot, a lot better than my game plan. Uh, he came out the victor. Uh, much respect to Brian Jennings. He's a great fighter. He's going to be, you know, he's going to be um, in the top rankings one day. And uh, you know, uh, God willing, we might meet again one day. But um, uh, that day, he, you know, he was the better, he was the better fighter that day. You know, we both, uh, both took the fight on uh, short notice. We both. Um, you know, we both had to dig deep in the fight and uh, and pull out whatever we could in the middle of the fight. And you know, uh, just like we said in the pre-fight um, in the pre-fight uh, interview, that uh, whoever whoever uh, win, lose, or draw in that fight, we both was gonna come out you know bigger than we already was. And you know, that's what happened. We both reached the uh, status now that you know that uh, we gotta you know we gotta we gotta train even harder to you know to stay at the status now. Yeah, so him being from Philly, and of course yourself, you were born in Philly. Now you're here in, in Washington, D.C., so what do you consider home for you? Um, I'm going to always consider Philadelphia my home, but Washington, D.C. is like, you know, like I, like I always say, uh, D.C. has became uh, my surrogate mother, you know, the one that took me in, you know, when, uh, when everything else fell. So, you know, of, of course, I always, you know, got to consider Philadelphia my home, but, but neck and neck, you know, they, they, they're both right here, Philadelphia and D.C. You know, I, can, I do consider D.C. my home also. So how, how long you been in, in D.C.? I've been in D.C. Uh, four years now. So pretty much your entire boxing career, you've been, you started right here in, in Washington. Well, I, actually, uh, I came down, I was, I was an amateur when I did come down. And uh, I never fought any amateur fights or anything down here, but I turned pro down here. Okay. Um, I know it's kind of tough getting sparring in this area. So how how's that been going for you? Uh, we have some some we have some real good uh, I have some real good friends that uh, that help me out. You know, uh, that's heavyweights in this area. Um, it, it is a little bit tough. It is a little tough, but um. But it's just like anything else in life. You gotta make it work. You gotta make it work. If I could, I'll spoil myself. <laughs> <laughs> that that one loss against um, Brian Jennings, did that change you as a professional fighter? Did it, or did you know? Did, what I'm trying to say, did it? Because some people take a step back when they lose. So how did that that fight actually help you? Uh, no, I'm not gonna say. It. I'm not gonna say it changed me. Uh, if anything, it helped me. Uh, it helped me. Um, it helped me see this. Uh, it helped. It helped me see my career in a different, a different way. Now I know, you know, uh, it's going to take a lot. Uh, it, you know, a lot more, a lot harder training, a lot more focus. You know, uh, it, it helped me trust my team a lot better because uh, I believe if I would have listened to my team just, you know, that much more in that fight. It, you know, we could have, uh, you know, the decision possibly could have went a different way. You know, it would have been a different outcome. But, it, yeah, it helped me grow as a, a fighter altogether.
Yeah, speaking of your team, you know, everybody always see uh, Maurice inside the ring, but they really don't see you in, in your training facility when you're working out. So, you know, who, who are, the, what is your team? Who is your team? Uh, I have Hiawatha Summers, who's my trainer. I have um, Adrian Davis, everyone knows, uh, uh, you know, a new addition to our team. I have Mike Harris, my manager slash trainer. That's the one that's, that if anybody in the D.C. area has seen me, seen Mike Harris. Or if they seen Mike Harris, they seen me. That's the one that, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with all the time. And that's, uh, that's pretty much my team. Um, the veteran experience of Adrian Davis you have, what brings him to you? And I guess you have open arms to everything that he has because of his experience. How's, how's that thing going for you? Uh, one thing about experience, you can't you can't trade it for nothing, you know. And he he you know he paid his dues in this sport. So with me having him by me and, and training me and you know things he say, I can easily trust because you know obviously you know it worked. Yeah, he, you know his his resume is uh, ridiculous. For me, be honest with you, I think he's overqualified for this job with me. <laughs> he's way overqualified, but you know. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, just having that experience in, in our corner is, uh, is priceless, you know, because, uh, you know, when, uh, when at certain situations, you know, you just can't wing it, you know. Sometimes you need somebody that's been there to say, you know, this is what we have to do. Yeah, you're, when you first started, I guess you started out in area fights, you know, Baltimore, here in D.C. How, how has it been, you know, flying, you know, going to Texas, you know, Going up the down to Mississippi oh, and been, Nebraska. Uh, it's been uh be honest with you, it's been uh, great, man. We got to see a lot of a lot of things, um, a lot of different kind of people. I like I like traveling. So uh, me and my team we go out there, we you know, we take a gazillion pictures, man, and you know, it's been fun. But on on the same note, you know, whenever there's a local fight, you know, locally we we, we also try to support because, you know, this is where, you know, this is where we started from. We don't try to you know, be bigger than what we really are. You know, we we we, we always try to uh, support our, our local uh, our, our local um, fighters. This fight coming up with um, Abdullah Salam, are you doing anything differently, far as because this is a I guess this guy is about as big as you are, and um, he has a 14 and 0 record. To you, does his record mean anything to you? No, nah, not really. No, nah, not really. Records are uh, records nowadays are built. You know what I mean. So it, his record isn't really uh, isn't really um, anything you know to worry about. Of course, uh, you know I gotta be be smart. And you know he didn't he didn't become 14 and 0, 14 knockouts just by you know just by them guys coming in there and laying down. But um, but at the same token, you know I, I trust in the fact that you know he hasn't fought anybody like me yet. You know, and this, you know, this is this is going to be his test. It's not going to be my test. When, in your in point in your career, when did you know that it was a time to take that step from just having your fight building uh, fights, a record building fights, up until the time where it's to fight legitimate talent? Because uh, I was in, I was at the fight in Baltimore, mm -hmm. at Du Burns Arena, when you fought uh, Jason Freeman. Mm -hmm. Was that the turning point? Of t caliber of fighters was that you know beating him because that was the first round knockout. Yeah, well, we didn't want to build our career off of um, off of uh, a lot of uh, fighting nobody. We didn't want to. We didn't want to. Uh, we didn't want to. We didn't want to get our respect that way. So um, you know, of course, we had to uh, we had to come up a little slow because you know you like like we go back to the experience thing. You you know you can't rush experience. So we had to come up slow, and then uh, when the opportunity rose for us to fight, uh, his name was Jason Freeman. Mm -hmm. At that fight, uh, we were uh, six and zero, I think, and he was five and zero, one draw. And uh, he just had recently beat one of the, the Beltway hopefuls, uh, um, Dwayne McCray. And uh, Dwayne McCray at that time was, you know, was um, everyone was real high on him. And you know, this guy came in and beat him to a decision. So uh, a lot of people was telling us not to. It's too early in our career, and um, but like I said, we didn't want to. We didn't want to uh, build our respect 
out of fighting a whole bunch of guys that, you know, that just want to uh, get a payday. So we took the fight. Thank God it turned out, you know, it turned out in our favor. But, you know, we, 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 didn't, we just didn't want to build our, we didn't want people to remember us that way. This fight coming up, are you preparing differently for this fight coming up? Or are you just doing what you do, but just adding a little more technique to it? To yeah, we're pretty much doing what we do, add a little more technique. We got a, um, all of our sparring, we, we had to strictly get uh, southpaw sparring because the guys are southpaw also. So, um, yeah, we, uh, there's certain things we, you know, we had to, to uh, switch up. Certain things we, you know, we, um, we got to be cautious of. Certain punches that he throw that we got to be cautious of. So, yeah, we had to switch some things up, not, not too much. Now, how, how did this fight come up? You know, come about. You know, get, trying to get this title fight. How did that? How did that all happen for you? Mike Harris, you gotta talk to Mike Harris about that one. <laughs> you know, that's the man. That, that's the man behind uh, behind the gloves and the uh, boxing trunks. <laughs> so, so being down here in D.C., you know, you you're, you got a family, right? Right? You have a family. Um, when you're not fighting, what are you doing? Xbox 360. <laughs> Xbox Live. <laughs> so you basically are home or at home, at home playing video games. That's it. And how how do you what do you think about all the all the local guys you know that that we have here in the area you know because DC is pretty much it's it's known but it's not as popular as it should be as far as talent wise in, in here you know even though we have some of the you know champions and top contenders in here for some reason people are not recognizing them like they do in Vegas and you know sometimes in uh, like maybe sometimes like in uh, New York or Philly or somewhere like that when they have big time fights, you know. I said uh, DC has uh, has. Um, I, I'm gonna tell you this. When I came down here, I thought Philadelphia had, you know, was end all, you know, boxing community. But DC has a legitimate boxing community, you know. I and it's a good question. I, I don't know why DC don't get as recognized as it should. Because uh, you had some phenomenal amateurs. I I, I came to, I, I, me and my manager, we were going to some gyms. And I would, you know, after I watched some of the sparring sessions, I'm trying to figure out who do I pay for, for seeing this. You know what I mean? But uh, I don't know why uh, DC don't get recognized for uh, for its merit. Because, you know, they had some great, some great fighters. And it's rich in, in boxing history. You got Mark Johnson that's going into the Boxing Hall of Fame. You know, you got uh, Keith Holmes. You got... You know, um, in the DMV area, you got William Joppy. You just got you got a long list of uh, of people that you know Sean that Bay paid Sean Bay, Sean Bay Mitchell. You got a long list of people that uh, paid. The, I, I I didn't even recognize it until I came down here and really was like, wow, this is uh you know it, it, it's a blessing to be down here amongst these fighters. But these guys paved the way. I don't know why you know uh, a lot of the guys don't just hop in line and you know. And, uh, and start trailblazing themselves, you know? Cause, yeah. Because the, especially the professionals that, that we have down here now, we have some, some great professionals. They should be paving the way for the amateurs. You got some, you got some fantastic amateurs down here that's just ridiculous, you know what I mean? You got, the, you got the whole Russell clan that, you know, I'm impressed from the oldest to the youngest out of all of them. It's like 30 of them, but, you know, and they're all, they're all great. So, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, that's one thing. That's another reason, you know, why I, I try to fight so hard for DC. You know, we, we go to a lot of gyms. When I do go to gyms, I like to, um, I like to train hard to show, to show the uh, the amateurs in the gym. You know, what it's gonna take to get to that next level. What you gotta do. You, you know, you just can't get comfortable at one at one stage. You know, and that's 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 what I'm trying to do for DC. I'm trying to I'm trying to be a, a trailblazer myself. Yeah, we have. You know, it's talent in all weight classes here, from from from, from bantamweight. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we have we have a lot. What do you think about you know your colleagues like Seth Mitchell and Tony Thompson, which is about to go to July seventh, your the day you fight. He's going over to fighting over in Switzerland with the, the Klitschko brother. Yeah, uh, Tony Thompson. Uh, what, what what can I say about him that you know hasn't been said, man? He's you know he's he's fighting for a title. You know that's you know he's a, he's a trailblazer for me. Seth Mitchell, you know, just fought, uh, just uh, beat Chad Willispoon on uh, 
on uh, HBO. Uh, I remember when I first came down, before I even turned professional, I was boxing with uh, with uh, with Seth. You know, so mm -hmm. I mean, those guys right there, those are uh, you know, even though I'm not you know too far behind them, but they're they're trailblazing for me. You know, they're making a they're they're uh, yeah, making a path for me, and I'm you know I'm just trying to jump in line and you know and uh, and uh, hopefully someday. I can, you know, I can, I can be the same way behind the next generation that's coming out of uh, uh, DC, especially the next heavyweight generation. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the heavyweight division right now, where do you put yourself? Like you say, you compare. You know, you try to be like Seth Mitchell and Tony Thompson. Would you, you guys, you and Seth, are pretty much in the same age bracket? Mm -hmm. But for Maurice Bynum, where do you see yourself as far as a heavyweight? Uh. I see myself. I see myself as um, an up and comer. I don't want to, you know. I I haven't arrived yet. Uh, I still have, you know. I still um. I still have a lot more tests to, you know, to legitimize myself. But uh, I see myself as, you know, someone that's on the on the um, on the upward spiral instead of, you know, instead of saying I, you know, I I've done what I've done already, you know. I, I, I really, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't feel like I scratched the surface yet. I feel like there's a lot, there's a lot of history for me to make. And uh, right now I'm just, you know, I'm just walking that timeline. With well, if, you know, presuming you have a, a good showing on July 7th, how would you rate yourself after that? Oh, even still, even still, because he, he, he's, um, I would say this fight right here is, is you know, it's, um, I, right now my career is going to be the biggest the biggest uh, fight of my career so far, but uh, at at the end of the day, what I, I look at it as just a um, it's just another hurdle. It's a hurdle, you know. It's a lot bigger than the, the hurdles that I had previously, but it's a it's a hurdle, and uh, you know I think I can I think I can jump over it. There you have it, Maurice. Oh, one more question before I end it. Freight train, where did that come from? <laughs> uh, my professional, my pro debut. We was in uh, we was in um, Baltimore. We was in Baltimore. We fought at a place called uh, Martin's West, and uh, we go out there and we in the lock in the locker room. The, um, the announcer comes up to us and say, he says, uh, "What's your uh, fight name?" So you know, we we never me and my team we never even thought about that. We just was like, just Maurice Byron. Just you know, just announces as Maurice Byron. He said, "I'll figure something out." So I said, oh, okay. So we got there. When we first started, he just announced me as Maurice Byron. So I'm, uh, we in there boxing the guy. First round did good. Second round did great. The, the, at the end of the second round, come to the corner and receive my instructions from my corner. And my trainer says, listen, it's not going out of the third round. I said, all right, all right, all right. He said, no, it's not all right. It's not going past this third round. I said, okay, okay. So we come out there, and I come out like, Phew. I come out like a, uh, like like a like a ball of fire, just you know, just and I steamrolled the guy in the third round. I knocked him out, destroyed him, and and the, and the announcer come up to me, he said, "Wow, that was you came out like a freight train." <laughs> and ever since after that, he, he, you know, he announced me as the freight train, and this started a movement that uh, that I you know that is bigger than it's bigger than Maurice Byron. There you have it. Maurice Freight Train Barm from C. Pleasant at the New Hope Boxing Gym with Pro-Am Fight Talk with Juan Marshall.